haven't done a rant for a while, so I figure I'm about to. But not, so this rants me over a couple things, specifically related to, as of this recording, fairly recent remarks made at a Goldman Sachs conference by the CEO of Hasbro, Chris Cox, which, boy, that name, last name seems determinative um, nomenclature there, determinative naming. Um, and because also do with the topic of AI. Just for a bit, do a cut there. Okay. Now, my view on generative AI is as follows. I don't like it. I value artists. I value writers. I value the work they do. I believe that they should be fairly compensated for their work. It's why I have commissioned fan artists for stuff in the past. Um, one of which is probably going to end up being is hopefully going to end up being a piece for a uh, blog post with some for some RPG related material on um, on my blog, and I like and I I value their work. I they believe they should be fairly compensated for what they do. I believe that artists who are retained to do long term work for um, the big publishers like Marvel and DC should be insurance should get insurance again fair compensation for the work that they do. I like um I appreciate artists getting royalties for their independent creator owned work, like through Dark Horse or through Image or IDW or what have you. Um what 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 other independent publishers they are who they're brother publishing their stuff rather than just licensed. So I bring this up because Chris Cox, after Wizards of the Coast had a big pledge to not use generative AI in their products anymore, stated in their Goldman Sachs conference, inside of development, we've already been using AI in response uh, for an article from Futurism. Cox said in response to a question about AI's potential to bring down production costs during the financial firm's annual Communicopia press conference. It's mostly machine learning based AI or proprietary AI as opposed to the chat GPT approach. We will deploy it significantly and liberally internally as both a knowledge worker aid and a development aid. And then he and then he, suge and then he suggested that he would become a part of D&D gameplay. The part before this is your standard, oh, the shareholders and the hedge fund managers and all those sorts of things. They want to hear me say nice things about AI. If I don't, they won't buy they won't buy shares in the company the price will go down and i'll get fired like that in and of itself is shitty but you know okay fine fine then like i hate it but i will grump but I, if it were just that i would grumble and think oh wizards is going to follow their my, my wizards is likely to follow their pledge and ignore this part, and the AI stuff will show up in the G.I. Joe line, the Transformers line, the lines which people are certainly very invested in, and I respect their emotional investment in those lines and those franchises, but it's not necessarily my thing. Not like D&D, not like Magic. Then, here's the part which ended up crawling in my brain like a city eel and living rent-free for the um, for the, the couple days, almost a week since this post came out. I'm probably more excited about the playful elements of AI. I play with probably 30 or 40 people regularly. There is not a single person who doesn't use AI somehow for campaign development or character development or story ideas. That is a clear signal that we need to be embracing it. And that had me going, what? For several reasons. First, look. Is he misunderstand? Is, is he assuming random number tables from the uh, or random tables where you roll a die, you roll a d twenty, you roll a d one hundred, and you pick something off the list for random generation? Is he assuming that that is AI? Because that's not. Um, I look forward to him saying, "Oh, D and D AI has been part of D and D since." AD&D first edition with the the random dungeon generation tables from the back of the of the DMG because then we can all just ignore 
reasonably ignore everything he says out of his out of his mouth at that point in terms of um, AI. But first, that's that, and then going thirty or forty people regularly because because that part that part's wedged in further and got me thinking. The most games I've played in at any one time, or been not, or have been like multiple campaigns or role playing games at once has been two now these were fairly full up games like let's let's say about five or six players per group uh um, plus a gm and that said those had some overlap we were playing at the same person's house even though he wasn't gming both games and again we had some thematic overlap between the two um we had common players so in reality, the total number of players there in the group was probably actually closer to eight to ten. Rather than thinking, like, how many groups are you in? Thirty to forty people regularly, even if it's just a, if it's even if each group only meets per month, even if they're not weekly games. And I'm going, is this like? And did the math. I'm like, okay, assuming six, assuming six players in a GM is the maximum reasonable number of people in a group before the GM, it gets tricky keeping track of things. That's that's going to be, and also including assuming that he's not counting himself in this number. So thus six players, six other players per group maximum so that's talking about like five to six groups per month that he's playing in regularly and this is assuming also and this is not getting into what games they're playing in terms of role-playing games because i'm going like well, those two groups I was in, we didn't just play D and D. We played a couple. We played a couple different games. One game was playing a D and D or another dungeon fantasy role playing game, Pathfinder, uh, Labyrinth Lord, what have you. And the other game was playing something unrelated, different genre called Cthulhu. Um, playing uh, mutants and masterminds. Like oftentimes it was like D and D and Call of Cthulhu, very different, stylistically different games and genre wise different games and i here's going assuming he's like only talking here about hey i'm playing the games in the, the, the rpgs that my company puts out which in the case of um yes uh, case of wizards of the coast only means D D. i mean they're like what i need mean, to have five to six D games at the same time and also, I mean, look, 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 okay, look, what are they in different campaign settings? Is it like, for, like Forgotten Realms one week, um, Ravenloft one week? Though know, he, this guy doesn't seem like a Ravenloft guy. Um, then, since we've got the Magic the Gathering settings included, uh, Ravnica, Theros, um, okay, Spelljammer. All right, yeah, that's five. That, that's five. Okay, you got five settings there. Um, Eberron gets you six. Maybe if you like swap out settings from them, one of them is it, it, assuming we don't. Let's say they don't. We don't have. Um, let's say no Ravenloft. This guy. This guy doesn't seem like a Ravenloft guy. Um, if if was, I feel like he was a Ravenloft guy, he'd appreciate the work of artists more for creating the sense of mood and tone. Um. So a uh, dragon lance for the sixth one. Although I, I feel like this guy in the dragon lance game, Market Weiss and Tracy Hickman will write this guy later to say, play something else, please. I don't want your our setting blighted by your association with you. Um, and I'm like five to six different dealing. I would have problems keeping my characters straight. I mean, yeah, this guy. Probably like maybe he's taking like really thorough notes, that sort of thing. So he's trying to keep straight of okay, so in this game, my dwarven fighter is um 
really ticked off at the mastermind at, at, at the the arch at the arch lich because um he killed my family um when he sat when his forces sacked our homeland and in this game he's like my Raphael private investigator in Eberron is like as um as post-traumatic stress disorder from his um from, from dealing with the war and in this setting and in uh, Ravnica my um my um character is it my is a goblin who works for a house Demir and like I can't see him keeping these characters and then try to do the next section he shows up and he's like which can put through through the giant binder I'm like of this character sheets there no it's okay accidentally pull out oh sorry and actually I'm sorry I got the house Demir character um goblin out I'm sorry let me let me put that back in the binder and let me get out the uh half elf private investigator um even if I mean, admittedly yes D, D beyond does help you some of this because your characters are directly tied to the campaigns so when you log in and you select the campaign that you're at for the night you know okay there's my there's my elf uh, there there's my half elf there's my goblin there's my dwarf but still like just heck you know, all those separate and then also how insulting is this to his gms unless he's running one of these how insult and we're running all of them unless he's like the ultimate forever gm where he's like god i can't keep straight it, it all those different plot lines and i can't keep coming up with new ideas for six different games at once what am i going to do i have to turn to ai because i have to have come up with six campaign ideas a six, six adventure ideas a month for six different games while also running a a multi-million dollar multi-billion dollar publicly traded company is that what he's doing is he the worst is he the ultimate forever gm which gets i feel bad for his players because he's not able to commit the time to this that would be necessary for all these games but that said i don't think he's that kind of gm he feels like a guy who's paying who is paying or hiring gms for all these games and also like with also all this it is for a certain industries is playing dungeons and dragons the new playing golf for uh, for networking purposes you don't go play golf because you enjoy the game you play golf because you're it's there to, to have face time with other businessmen for an extended period while you play 18 holes and you and everyone compliments the, the the terrible swings of the other play of the the executive who they're trying to impress and close the business deal with is that what this is is is, is, is instead of complimenting someone's bad hook um or slice as if no they did that on purpose is it is this instead complimenting another business executive's terrible attempt at a scottish or german accent at the role-playing table for their dwarf it, um is that the new the ceo thing now um is that where we're at because otherwise i'm like uh, it's, but again five to six people like, eventually like for the same game eventually you get mentally tapped out you get burned out by playing the same game too much that's why you like maybe most people if they even they do multiple games a month even if they're the same system they run one and play the other they they, they get to put out their game master um energies into running a game and then to relax and be a player and put those energies out in the other game again assuming they don't play a couple different games whether it's not i'm running call of cthulhu or running star trek adventures and then playing dungeons and dragons or what have you it's like it feels like the more i sit the more i read this the more i look at it the more it lives in my brain you know what it feels like it feels like that, like that guy in college, maybe in the message board, maybe you've only encountered a person like this in the message board, 
but that person in college who goes up who tries to make himself seem cool when your um gym in your uh gym credit or your um your your, your physical credit uh, exercise credit whether it's uh, taking weight room or karate or judo or track or swing dance or whatever who says yeah i used to be special forces got a whole bunch of medals doing a whole bunch of real top secret stuff but can't tell you about it tell you I could kill you kill, and if i had to kill you i could do it by pinky. that kind of guy He feels like that kind of uh, like like guy who's overinflating his cred, who is trying way too hard to say, I understand D and I am in playing with 30 or 40 people on a regular basis without even thinking about what that says or means. And think, oh, the high number is good, is important. These people are business executives. They want to know I have a good set. Like when I you have a testimonial like this. They want to know I have a good sample size. They want to say up oh, and, and they like big numbers, but I can't say like too big a number. I can't say I play with a hundred people on a regular basis. Cause that sounds that that will obviously trip even their BS sensors. And they don't even play D and D the most they know of D and D is that one scene from ET or maybe watching stranger things. So, um, 30 or 40 people, I have 30, 40 people on a regular basis. They'll think that sounds done normal that i have my finger on the pulse of the game and in reality he has maybe played 30 with 30 to 40 people combined ever he has played with some games run maybe a couple one shots run at wizards this this guy had some time done some time at Wizards in an executive role in the past before he became CEO. Perhaps even then, maybe when he was at Wizards, he was in several groups. And he's saying, "I've played," and he is fudging things with the tents. I have played with thirty or forty people on a regular basis. Again, at Wizards, possibly with R and D, and possibly also sitting in on um, R and D sessions for adventures for the fifth edition rules when it was back when it was DD next maybe he's even sat in, in on some r d sessions for uh dnd 2024 but even there i don't think he i don't think near all of those any of those players use ai as he says they do in fact quite i think quite the opposite i think not to put too fine a point on it, I think the cock, the Cox, lied to shareholders publicly. I could be wrong, but it feels like it doesn't fit. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Tossing me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>